What's up to all our sidekicks and henchmen out there in the Geek Nation? I am JD, owner of Johnny Destructo's Hero Complex at 4327 Main Street in Philadelphia, PA. is a tiny little comic shop right there on Main Street. It is, uh, it's kind of adorable, I'm going to be honest. I like it a lot. Uh, just, that's my personal opinion. You should come down and buy some comics from me if you're so inclined. I am here to bring you a Thunder Round. What is a Thunder Round? I'll tell you. It's a 60-second review. And I'm going to do not one, but two of them. First one's going to be Carnage, Red, White, and Blood. And then we're going to talk about Alien from Marvel Comics. Oh, my wife just brought me some delicious tea. What kind of tea is it? Just black. Just black. Listen, dog, it's just black tea. Nothing crazy. But we got a new uh, thing, a new coffee machine for my birthday. And it like did, she does the foam milk thing. She's all about the foamed milk. Delicious. So, uh, all right, first up, I'm going to put that down, and uh, the cat will get into it, and then it'll put a lot of cat hair in it, and really just liven up the flavor. And uh, let's see, Carnage, Black, White, and Blood is number one. I have the Patrick Gleason variant cover, the Webhead variant cover, which I think is very striking, and he's been doing a bunch of these covers for Amazing Spider-Man, and... Um, uh, I think they're really, really cool. They're just supposed to be as if the drawings were made out of webbing, which is fun. Anyway, uh, this is a, an anthology series from Marvel Comics featuring Carnage, who, if you don't know who that is, you know who Venom is, you know who the symbiote is, right? So basically, Peter Parker, during Secret Wars, the cat is knocking over my camera, during Secret Wars, um, he gets a new costume, he brings it to Earth, he finds out it is a, a, a symbiote, it's a living creature that's trying to bond permanently with Peter Parker. And he's like, mm-mm, get, get out of here, kid, don't want you. So basically, he has the Fantastic Four remove the symbiote, that eventually bonds with Eddie Brock, becomes Venom, and there is a offspring from Venom which bonds with Cletus Cassidy, who is just basically a psychopath. He's a, he's a serial murderer. And that's that creates carnage. So basically it's Venom. Marvel wanted Venom to go a little bit more towards being a little bit of a good guy. And they created Carnage, who is irredeemable. He just murders for fun. He's a nutball. That's kind of that, right? So this, number one, Carnage Black, White, and Blood, is another in a series of... of I guess series, a series of series that Marvel is doing where it's um, like a black and white comic book, but with one spot color throughout. So they've also done Wolverine, black, white, and blood. DC has done it with Superman, red and blue, Batman, black and white, etc., etc. Uh, so we've got four, three stories. I know how to count. Three stories in this anthology issue. Number one, Love Story by Teeny Howard and Ken Lashley. End of the Trail by Benjamin Percy and Sarah Pakelli. And You Are Carnage by Al Ewing and John McRae. So I'm going to dive right into it. We're going to put 60 seconds on my clock and go. So I, I actually am a big fan of Carnage, or at least I used to be. I was a big fan of Venom, and then they turned him into a good guy, and I thought that was kind of lame. So... You know, peaks and valleys with that character, but I thought, ooh, Carnage. And this is back when I was uh, much younger, and I was like, ooh, he's he's so violent, and uh, he's so edgy. Now he's just kind of whatever. I don't really care about Carnage all that much. But when he appears, I'm excited to see him from the nostalgia of it. So I was really curious about this issue. It is not great. I did not care about any one of these different stories which don't seem to be in continuity at all. It's just Carnage throughout the ages, even though Carnage didn't appear on Earth until Venom brought him. But now, for some reason, there's an old Westy Carnage story, right? And I didn't find any of the stories approachable. I didn't find them to be entertaining or even mildly interesting. I found uh, at least one of them to be indecipherable. I didn't really know what was happening. Uh, the storytelling was a little off. And that's it. End of round. So, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in this. I, I don't like to uh, put out bad reviews, but I'm one guy. My opinion is stupid. Why are you even watching this? So uh, if you're into Carnage, maybe this is your bag, baby. But it certainly wasn't mine. And um, when I closed the book, I just... 
there was nothing. It was a plateau. Uh, my emotional being was just a plateau of not giving a crap. I opened the book. I read the book. I closed the book. That was the end of my experience. So uh, maybe it'll be for you. It wasn't for me, and that's okay. So we're gonna jump right ahead to another murderous alien Marvel property. Marvel just recently got the rights to do both Alien and Predator as comic books. Previously, that those rights belonged to Dark Horse, and they were actually in the middle of doing a Predator um, original screenplay adaptation comic book series. And they didn't even get a chance to put that out because Marvel swooped in and took or bought out the rights, I assume, is what happened. But now, Marvel has Alien Number 1 by Philip Kennedy Johnson and art by Salvador La Roca. And I will show you the cover that I have, which is the Patrick Cleason, another Patrick Cleason variant. And this is dope as hell. I love this variant. I think it's really great. I love how you have the, the Xenomorphs elongated skull, but then also it sort of morphs into um, a silhouette of a planet with the sun peeking out over the horizon. I think this is a really well done variant cover. I love the hell out of it. And there are a lot of really good variants for this Alien number one series. So um, it was kind of hard to pick one, but overall I think the, the um, double sort of visual meaning here kind of brought me in. So like I said, it is Philip Kennedy Johnson and Salvador La Roca. I do not have a great history with Salvador La Roca. Um, he had done a pretty good run on Iron Man, which I say is pretty good only because I think the writing was excellent, but I've never ever been a fan of his art. He sort of hits this uncanny valley when he's drawing humans. I think uh, he's a great idea or a great choice for the Xenomorph and for all of the different mechanics and the, um, you know, the, the guns and the um, uh, vehicles, I think. But his people are, are horrifying. Uh, not great, I do not like them at all. So I thought, I'm a big Alien fan. I really enjoy Alien 1 and Alien 2. I think that Alien 1, the film, is a perfect horror film and Aliens, which is the direct sequel, is a perfect action film. I think they are both just really good examples of those genres. And it's kind of fun how they work in, in both genres, right? Uh, I feel similarly about Terminator. I think Terminator 1 is a great horror movie and T2 is a, a perfect action film, right? So uh, I was really excited about this. I'm gonna put 60 seconds on my clock and go. So basically we have a character who has narrowly escaped the alien, um, a whole brood of them, and he is trying to get on with his life. He's getting back to Earth. He's trying to reconnect with his son. But meanwhile, there's a subplot of uh, people who see Waylon Yutani, the people who are, are uh, behind sort of trying to cultivate and harness as a weapon the xenomorph. Um, they're fascists and they're, you know, pro-military and they're trying to, um, well, you know, Waylon Yutani is pro-military. And so there's these rebels that are trying to bring them down. So those are the two sort of subplots that are going through this. I think it's off to an interesting start. I wasn't wowed completely by it, but I think for the first 10 minutes of an alien film, it's right on cue. It, it, it fits perfectly within um, the, the sort of the, what would you call it? The, the character, right? The story that they are used to told by um, Alien. Boy, that sentence was terrible. So I think it's off to a good start. I think it has the, the potential to end of round to get better as it goes. So I'm definitely going to continue with it. I'm curious to see where Marvel is headed with it. And I did not like Salvador La Roca's art. True to form, didn't love it. Uh, his people are weird. His people are weird looking. Uh, I don't know if he's tracing them, but there is definitely something strange happening where the, the, the characters are there, but they're a little creepy. So they, they're, they're sort of missing life. They, they don't have any life behind the eyes or the movements. It's all very static, and it just does not speak to me as an art style. I am not the guy for that art. But I'm going to stick around with it. I'm going to choke it down just because I like Alien, and I think that the story has potential. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. Carnage, didn't care. Alien, pretty good. Neither of them blew me away, but the, the one I'm definitely not going to read. I'm not going to bother with any more issues of Carnage, Red, White, and Blood. But Alien number two, I'm definitely going to pick up. If you want to try them out at your local comic shop, they are out 
this Wednesday, which should be today, depending on when I get around to editing this and posting it. You can join us this Sunday, where I'm sure we will be talking about at least one of these books. This Sunday, 10.30 a.m., where we do the Cult Pop Spoiler Alert live stream, and we talk about this week's comic books, as well as a little bit of pop culture news and shenanigans. Uh, also, every Tuesday I go live at 2 o'clock uh, to show you what uh, is coming into my shop. I do an unboxing video where I show you all of the comics, graphic novels, statues, accoutrement that is coming out at my shop. And um, it's a fun time to hang out. A lot of people set their alarms to it and we just spend time while they're at work at their desk or I guess at home working at their desk. And um, we also do these Thunder Round videos. And the cat is chewing the cord, knocking over the... Here we go. Trying to knock over my cameras. Uh, this is Beatrix Kiddo. Hi, honey. She's very shy. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me for the past couple of minutes. I know Noel... My buddy, who is also on this channel, he did uh, two Thunder Rounds. He did one Thunder Round video with two reviews. Uh, he did Harley Quinn number one from DC Comics, as well as Teen Titans Academy number one from DC Comics. So go check those out. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. I'm going to sip my tea. Oh, that's good. And uh, Ted Lasso hates tea, uh, which is surprising to me. It's garbage water, he calls it. I think it's lovely as long as you put a lot of uh, foamed milk on it and a lot of honey and basically destroy the flavor of the tea. It's delicious. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And I will talk at you later. Fist bump. Ka-clang. Cold pop.